Oh, Marshall, don't you know the glorious history of the bro code? The year was 1776. The place, Philadelphia. Benjamin Franklin and George Washington were having a drink. I call a dibs on that wench. You codpiece blocked me. So what if I did? No rule against it. But there should be. There should be a set of rules that govern the way bros comport themselves among other bros. Who cares about the bro code? It's just some stupid book you made up. <gasps> How dare you? The bro code has been around for centuries, nay, whatever's more than centuries. Please don't launch into a fake history lesson. The bro code can trace its lineage all the way back to Brosis himself. <laughs> Article one, bros before hoes. But who shall write such a document? I have to go to me, DC, and pose for the dollar bill. And I have to do some kite flying or something. I shall write this set of rules. And I shall inscribe it on the back of the Constitution to save paper. It's resolved. Barnabas Stinson shall write the Bro Code. Yeah! The sacred text was eventually brought to the New World in 1776 by none other than Christopher Brolumbus. Article 62. A bro who calls dibs first has dibs. Oh? Dibs! And that's why he got to bang Pocahontas. Pocahontas was with John Smith. So anytime you think you might have a fight, you just get up and leave? 100% effective. Can't fight if you're not there. That's what Gandhi taught us. Boy, that's not true. Already the three days rule is insane. I mean, who even came up with that? Jesus. Barney, don't do this. Not with Jesus. Seriously. Jesus started the whole wait three days thing. He waited three days to come back to life. It was perfect. If he'd have only waited one day, a lot of people wouldn't have even heard that he died. All those famous last words people supposedly said, they're all made up. Like that patriotic dude, Nathan Hale from third grade history. My only regret is I have but one life to lose for my country. You know what his real last words were? I'm peeing my pants! <laughs> True story. It'd be all, hey, Jesus, what up? And Jesus would probably be like, what up? I died yesterday. And then they'd be all, uh, you look pretty alive to me, dude. And then Jesus would have to explain how he was resurrected and how it was a miracle. And then the dude would be like, uh, okay, whatever you say, bro. Wow, ancient dialogue sounds so stilted now. You are spitting on the grave of Sir Walter Dibbs, inventor of the Dib. It was 1652. The SS Dibbs was lost at sea. Look, I don't have time for a fake history lesson, so I'll keep this simple. You go over there and talk to that girl. I will see you in court. And who's going to represent you? Dibs on Marshall is my lawyer. Damn it. <laughs> and he's not going to come back on a Saturday. Everybody's busy doing chores, working the loom, trimming their beards. No. He waits the exact right number of days. Three. Plus, it's Sunday, so everyone's in church already. They're all in there. Oh, no. Jesus is dead. Then, bam, he bursts through the back door. Runs up the aisle, everyone's totally psyched. And FYI, that's when he invented the high five. Mm. Hey, Barnstormer. Hey, Roro. <laughs> okay, now you have adorable nicknames. Seriously, what's going on with you two? Nothing, we're just happy. It's like Gandhi said, smile don't cost nothing, sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you know who Gandhi is. We wait three days to call a woman because that's how long Jesus wants us to wait. True story. <laughs> Have you studied history, Ted? Extensively, but I'm a little shaky on fake history, the so... The tragic cost of a broken broth dates back to ancient Broman times. Hey, Brotus, you'd tell me if, like, a bunch of dudes were conspiring to assassinate me, right? Um, totally, Caesar. Paranoid much? Just to be sure, can you swear a broth to me? Sure, I swear. Loneliness. The looming specter of Valentine's Day fast approaching. The two key ingredients to my favorite day of the year, February 13th, Desperation Day. That's not a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Much like Valentine's Day itself, Desperation Day dates back thousands of years. Weddings were forbidden under ancient Roman law, so St. Valentine performed them in secret under threat of death. That's actually true. Wait, there's more. This won't be. Oh. Yeah. 
to Bronte. And then he banged like a hundred chicks and invented a salad. True story. Right by St. Valentine's side was his best bro, St. Desperatious, there to pick off insecure bridesmaids. Whoa, check out that one. Her body is a perfect X. Play a play on, hi V. Oh, Jupiter, what are your plans for me? Fifteen and still unmarried. And I thought Pompeii was smoking. Stinson's Hangover Fixer Elixir, the most effective post bender heads to tender ender from here to Denver. What's in it? Glad you asked. Uh, I Columbia take University, it back. I 1941. Take it back. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, whom we all know is most famous for being a world class drunk. Let's just speed this along. You're clearly ripping off the story of the Manhattan Project, which was run by Dr. Robert Oppenheimer. So. I'm gonna guess it was your distant relative, Barnert Stinsenheimer. Somebody's read their history books. The Too Many Manhattans project hit a few snags at first. The first batch exploded, which sounded kind of like this. Boom! You suck. Every single international conflict essentially boils down to sexual tension. Every international conflict. Every single one, dude. So the crisis in the Middle East could be solved by... Gaza strippers. <laughs> Next. Uh, apartheid? Apart thighs. What else you got? Cold War. Mrs. Gorbachev, take down those pants. <laughs> After some trial and error, Dr. Stinsenheimer finally found the magic formula. Hang on. Funyuns? Tantrum soda? Sure. In 1941? Sure. They haven't made new tantrums since then. That stuff lasts a while. No, es posible. Nobody moves to Argentina. The Argentinian peso has dropped two thirds in five years. The government is opposed to free market reforms, and the railroad has been a mess since the breakup of Fierro Carillas Argentinos. I hooked up with an Argentinian exchange student in a portage on outside Yankee Stadium. Man, she was chatty. Anyway, he was awarded the Brobel Prize. True story. I'm sorry, sometimes I forget how seriously you guys take American Thanksgiving. Real Thanksgiving happened over a month ago. I'm sorry, did you just say Canadian Thanksgiving was, and I'm quoting, the real Thanksgiving? What do Canadians even have to celebrate about? The Canadian Thanksgiving celebrates explorer Martin Frobisher's valiant, yet ultimately unsuccessful attempt to find the Northwest Passage. Why are you guys even a country? You, you think John Kennedy and Jack Kennedy are the same person, <laughs> right? <laughs> what? Here I am, moving off to Japan just to get away from him. And, and I guess to see those, those terracotta warriors in the Great Wall. Well, that's China. What, this note is just a paper plate. All right, that's it. I'm just going to move to some country where no one's seen The Wedding Bride. Good luck, Ted. That movie is worldwide. It's huge. Maybe North Korea. Nope. I read that Kim Jong-il said it was his second favorite movie of all time. Right behind a movie of him riding a horse in slow motion through a field of turnips. <laughs> Sorry, Ted, you're screwed. Did you know the word karaoke is Japanese for empty orchestra? Isn't that hauntingly beautiful? Enemies can't become friends. Yes, they can, right, guys? Oh, oh, sure. Sure. No, 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 no. You guys can't be objective. You still feel guilty about last night. Well, let's get an outside opinion. Who are we going to... Dear Wang Guy, oh. can enemies ever be friends? Just wondering. Hmm. Okay, so what? I would rather be nice than be like you, always getting in fights about stuff that's not even worth fighting about. I disagree. It's like Sun Tzu wrote in The Art of War, never give up, never surrender. That was Tim Allen in Galaxy Quest. Whatever, dude. Yes, enemies can become friends. Remember what Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm. Uh, did Wayne Guy just quote Gandhi? Of all the words you could use to describe La Sagrada Familia, brown, pointy, weird. The one that really seems to stick is unfinished, why? Because on June 7th, 1926, the architect, Anthony Gaudi, whose beard was also brown, pointy, weird, and unfinished, was run over by a bus. And so, his greatest masterpiece would remain forever